G'day folks, it's Rob here and welcome to our Backyard Farm and Aquaponics YouTube channel. Today's clip we're going to be looking at the 12 volt backup system we use to provide air to the fish in case of a blackout here. I'll be running through how it's um, plumbed up using the hoses to the air stone and also how it's wired up as well using a little relay or a headlight relay component. Um, so we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, if you haven't been to our channel before, this is the first time you've clicked on it. Uh, we do a lot of aquaponic clips. I've got a playlist that covers everything from building a small system you can expand into a bit of a beast like this one here it also looks at building components like radial flow filters uh, solids lifting outlets um, also other things like um, testing for iron deficiencies and uh, how you can amend them into the system so you end up with some fairly lush looking greenery uh, if you'd like to subscribe as well you can do so by hitting that little button down there clicking the bell icon when it appears and you'll be sent a link whenever we do upload a clip to YouTube and you can come along and suss that out so I'll stop uh, nattering on and we'll open up the cabinet and have a bit of a gander at this backup system. So this is the little cabinet we have down here that is housing the backup and a few other bits and pieces as well. Uh, we've got uh, some comp compressors down the bottom there. I'm actually running two at the moment uh, because it's summer here and we like to have a lot of dissolved oxygen in the water. Uh, we have a battery charger as well to charge up the batteries, a power pack. I've got some fish food in there and other bits and pieces. And these are the backup batteries I have. They're actually run in um, connected in parallel, so I get double the the, um, the juice or double the amp hours in them, so they can run a little bit longer. Um, mainly because you don't like your batteries to run down more than 50%. And yeah, this is pretty much all the heart of the little backup system right here, the relay. And up the back there might be a bit hard to see, but we have a pump that is suspended. Now with these little pumps, um, they can get rather noisy, so it is a good idea to suspend them so they don't annoy the neighbours too much, just as I have done with these guys down here as well. They're just suspended off a rack there. Now the backup itself, what we have is a little 12 volt adapter down there that is plugged into the 240 volt. Uh, we have the positive and the negative lines going into this relay, which I'll go through in more detail in a second. And then from there we have a positive line from the battery going into the relay and the other positive line going up into the pump. So what happens is uh, basically uh, when the power goes out, the um, little switch in here turns off and the power is allowed to run through this lead directly through into the pump itself. I've just turned off one of the pumps down the bottom there, but up the back you can see the airline runs down uh, through these two shelves here, down and it splices into an existing airline that comes out of this pump here. I have a one-way valve here that prevents any water going back into the pump and I have another one here. Uh, this one prevents any air from this compressor going up into the backup which is up the top and this one here also prevents any air coming from the backup once the power goes out going back through into this pump here and from there it runs pretty much all out into the fish tank um, i actually have them up over the top of the hoop house frames to help stop any water coming back down into your pump uh, this one here has a non-return valve at this point here so no water will come back through here and down into the pump and this other one is the main backup line. Now I know people have had a crack at me before about this but it is generally a bad idea to have your compressors down below the water level of your fish tanks because I've got the um, one-way valves in there I'm not too concerned I've never had an issue with water coming back down through the lines to the pumps and I think having it up over the top of the framework of the hoop house before it goes into the fish tank also helps as well. So we're just up here at the fish tank and we're going to simulate a blackout. I've got my little assistant Kira, thank you Kira, and we're going to turn the air compressor off and we're just going to let the water settle for a little bit. And now if you could turn the um, adapter off Kira, the adapter that's holding the relay open, you will see that the 12 volt pump has kicked in and it actually provides a little bit more air to the system than the 240 volt one. So it's pretty easy, it's a pretty simple little setup and it's going to make sure that the fish survive, they have plenty of oxygen in there until you can get there to um, either replace a blown fuse or the power company comes out to repair your service. So every couple of months I like to make sure that these batteries are just on full charge. So what I do is I just pull off the um, positive line from the relay here, then turn the relay off and unplug it. And that way, you know, the backup isn't going to fire off. And then all I need to do is just plug in my little battery charger here. Pop the positive on the positive term terminal. 
negative onto negative, turn her on, and away we go. Now the reason I've got two batteries here and I'm running them in parallel is it means that I've got double the amp hours. Now these small car batteries have got roughly around about 45 amp hours of 12 volt power in them. So by connecting them in parallel, that's negative to negative, positive to positive, I've doubled my amp hours to roughly around about 90 amp hours. So my little pump didn't come with any mention of amps in the specification, how many amps it used an hour, but you can work that out by dividing the watts, my little pump's 25 watt, and by the volt, so it's a 12 volt system, so I get roughly around about 2 amps. So I know that um, in one hour I'll use about 2 amps worth of power. Now the two 45 amp batteries uh, will hold around about 90 all up because they're joined in parallel. So I know that I can run my little pump for roughly around about 45 hours if I wanted to and I was hard pressed and there was no power available otherwise. However, it is a good idea not to drain your batteries down less than 50% because you can affect the longevity of the battery itself. So I've got probably around about 22 hours of backup before I start affecting the, live, the longevity of these batteries. But if it's the only power I've got, I'm just gonna let them run flat because the fish are more important than buying a couple of new car batteries in my book. I actually stumbled upon this little system on the Backyard Aquaponics Forum. Uh, Chainsaw posted it a number of years back. Thank you very much, Chainsaw. There's a lot of other people who have contributed as well. You've got to give credit where credit's due. So it's a little bit hard to um, run through the, the actual layout with it all crammed into the box there. So I've made up a little bit of an animation just to help you understand how it all works and also to how the relay works for you folks who are a little bit mystified by it all. Now the major players in this are, of course, the pump, which sends the air out to the fish in the battery that powers the pump. Now to control whether the pump is on or off we have a headlight relay. It's a five pin headlight relay and that is controlled by a 12 volt adapter. And from the diagram you can see that we have a negative wire connected to the battery that runs through the pump. We have a positive wire connected from the battery all the way through to the relay and then we have a separate wire positive coming out and going to the pump itself. From the um, 240 volt to 12 volt adapter, we have a line coming out to both the positive and the negative terminal on the relay itself. I'll run through the numbers and how to wire it up in a tick. You'll also see there's one terminal there with no wires connected to it. Don't worry about that. We'll get to that in a minute as well. So this is the little relay that I've used based off the one that I saw in Chainsaw's post on Backyard Aquaponics. As you can see, the pins don't line up nicely, so I've gone for a little animated version. Inside the relay itself, you've got a little magnetic coil that is powered by the 12 volt adapter, and then you have a little switch in between. Now this little switch will go to either one of the um, contacts on the right or the left of it, depending on what's going on with the magnetic coil. If there's power running through the coil, it's magnetized, the switch will go over to that contact. And as you can see, as there's no wires connected to it, nothing's happening. There's no power getting from the battery over to the air compressor. When the power is turned off, the coil is no longer magnetized and there is a small spring, not shown in the diagram, that forces the switch over to the other contact, completing the circuit, allowing power to run through the positive terminal on the battery, through the relay and then onto the pump itself, so the fish can have as much air as they need until the power can go back on. Here's a bit of a look at how ours is wired up. Now these pin numbers are based on the little diagram that you saw on the, this particular relay, so it will vary from relay to relay, something you will need to check out for yourself. But for ours, I've got the positive and negative from the 12 volt transformer connected to pins 85 and 86. Pin number 87A has the positive running to it from the battery, and pin number 30 has the positive running out of the relay into the pump itself. So it may look a bit confusing to a few of you folks out there, but I will include some links down in the description below uh, to a couple of places that um, hooked up these relays in different ways, just to give you a few ideas on how you can use them in your system. And as I've said before, keep in mind, this is how it works for the relay that I purchased. The relay you purchased um, may need to be wired up differently. 
also to uh, pick the brains of the folks at the electronics store. Make sure you know, I mean, even show them this video if you want. Uh, make sure they know what you want to do. We need something in a resting position while it's on. So when the power goes off, it goes, completes the circuit and the compressor is turned on. So um, yeah, just make sure they understand what you're actually looking for. Uh, there are some other backups that you may be interested in checking out. There are inline flow switches. Now they come in handy when you have a circumstance like we did the other week where a uh, pipe fell off the fish tank, one of the drains, and it allowed all the water to be pumped out of the sump tank. Now the electricity was still flowing fine so luckily I had my other compressors in there and they were able to provide air to the fish. If I was running with just a Venturi though, I could have ended up in all sorts of problems with dead fish, a lot of fish emulsion basically. So an inline flow switch would have come into play at that point in time. So there's something you may um, consider looking at. There is another one as well. I'll just go grab it, I left it off to one side. So this is the little float switch that I grabbed a while ago when we just had the Venturi in the system. The whole idea behind this is when the float is up, the circuit is broken. When the float is down, when the water level drops, a little magnet in there brings the switch together and you have current passing from one wire through to the other and onto your backup air system. Now, because I'm running the two um, the 240 volt uh, compressors in there, I haven't worried about this as much, mainly because if there is a mechanical catastrophe like happened the other week with the drain falling off, those pumps will continue to pump. And if we have a blackout, um, there's no issue at all either. Um, the backup will kick in and as you saw, there's loads of air getting into the water. But a little switch like this or an inline flow switch is definitely something you need to think about. If you're just running with Venturis to aerate your system and you have no um, air compressors adding air in for the fish. So you can actually get little 12 volt switches made up in units. Uh, this one came from a mate of ours who retired your system. G'day Brett. Hope you and Vicky are doing well. Uh, it's basically a 240 volt transformer with a relay built in. Needs to be done by a proper electrician. And as you can see, this one was wired in properly. Brett had a uh, Sparky do the job. Now, I haven't included it in my system for two reasons. Firstly, I want a Sparky to have a look over it, uh, just to make sure she's all running fine. And secondly, I want to move a few things around first. Uh, if you are in the market for a pre-built little unit like that, there is a link up there and probably in the description down below to Aqua Gardening here in Brisbane. Um, there, I'm actually an affiliate for their store, just to let you know, keep everything above board. Uh, they sell those little units, as well as a compressor that has a 12 volt backup built into it. So it's an all-in-one jobby. Uh, you pop the airstone straight into the tank. If the power goes out, it kicks over to the built-in backup battery within the compressor itself. So they might be a couple of options for you folks who are not really into the DIY, but do recognize you need a bit of a backup in your aquaponics. So they are a pretty easy little unit to knock together to keep your fish happy during a blackout. Before I go, I do need to send out a huge Thank you and g'day to all the marvellous folks who are helping to support our channel over on Patreon. There's a list of super contributors down below, including a IT chap up in Toowoomba, an aquaponics store here in Australia who we're an affiliate for, a guitar maker, a new aquaponics startup, and a couple of homesteaders and backyard farmers have got their links down there. So feel free to pop down and check them out after you finish watching the clip. So I will leave it there. I do hope you're all well and happy and this clip has helped you out in some way and I will catch you later. Cheers folks, have a top one. So we're just up here at the fish tank and we're going to simulate a blackout. So what we're going to do is turn the air compressor off and then we're just gonna let the water settle for a little bit. Oh, is that it? Yeah, I'll start again. <laughs> 